The 1500 Terrain Cut front mowers are loaded with features for productive, easy operation and comfortable mowing. In this operator video, we'll show you how to operate the 1500 Terrain Cut mowers correctly and safely. Remember, you are responsible for your own safety and the safety of those around you. Safety should be the first thing you think of when operating any machine. Always wear your seatbelt low and snug when the ROPS is in the up position. Do not wear your seatbelt when the ROPS is folded down. Since we won't cover everything in this video that you need to know, be sure to read the printed operator's manual before mowing. The operator's manual is available in Spanish and this DVD contains a Spanish language version of this video. If you have any questions about the information on this video, ask your John Deere dealer. We'll start with a look at the 1500 Terrain Cut Operator Controls, Features, and Adjustments. The ignition switch is mounted to the right of the steering wheel and has off, run, and start positions. The throttle is located on the steering column to the left of the steering wheel. Move the throttle forward to increase engine speed. Pull it back to decrease engine speed. On open station models, the lighting control switch is located on the steering column to the right of the steering wheel. On cab models, the light switch, windshield wiper switch, and turn signal switch are located on the console to the operator's right. The steering column tilt lock lever is on the left side of the steering column. Pull the tilt lever to unlock the steering column, adjust the column forward or back for comfort, and then push the lever inward to lock the steering column in place. The park brake pedal is located to the right of the steering column. The park brake lock is located on the floorboard at the base of the steering column. To lock the park brake, push down on the pedal with your right foot and hold it in place. Engage the brake lock with your left foot and release the brake pedal. The forward and reverse pedals are located on the floorboard to the right of the park brake. Press down on the inner forward pedal to move forward and press down on the outer reverse pedal to move in reverse. On the floorboard to the left of the steering column are the left and right turn brakes. When driving forward, press and hold the left pedal for tighter left-hand turns, or the right pedal for tighter right-hand turns. The differential lock pedal is located on the floorboard to the left of the steering column. Engage the differential lock to force both of the front drive wheels to drive for better traction in slippery conditions. To engage the differential lock, bring the mower to a complete stop. Press and hold the pedal down, and then press the forward or reverse pedal to continue mowing. On the console, on the operator's right, is the mowing deck or implement raise and lower lever. Pull the lever back to raise the implement. The implement will raise until you release the lever or it reaches the top of its travel. Push the lever forward to lower the implement. The implement will lower until you release the lever or it reaches the ground. To set the implement to float over ground contours, push the lift lever forward until it latches into the float position. The implement will raise and lower as needed to closely follow the ground. The yellow PTO switch or knob is located on the right console behind the lift lower lever. Push the switch forward to engage the PTO. Push the switch back to disengage the PTO. On some models, pull the knob up to engage the PTO. Press the knob down to disengage the PTO. On models with four-wheel drive and or two-speed transaxle options, the four-wheel drive lever and axle speed lever are located on the right console. To the rear of the console is the indicator light and hour meter module display. The display includes multiple screens depending on the information you need. Available displays include the hour meter, which records the total number of hours the engine has operated. There are also fault codes that indicate any problems with the machine. To go to the next screen in the menu, press the Next button. To enter your selection, press the Enter button. To return to the menu or main screen, press the Reverse button. See the operator's manual for more information about the indicator icon displays. To the left of the operator are the fuel tank and fuel gauge. The 1500 Terrain Cut open station models have three seat options. The non-suspension deluxe comfort seat has adjustable armrests. And you can adjust the seat forward or back for comfortable operation. The optional mechanical suspension seat lets you adjust the seat to the operator's weight to smooth the ride. 
The mechanical suspension seat also features forward and back adjustment, an adjustable lumbar support, and armrests. The optional air ride suspension seat provides ultimate comfort with air pressure adjustable suspension, adjustable lumbar support, adjustable seat back, and armrests. When working, your first line of defense against injury is wearing proper clothing for the job. Make sure you are dressed safely with sturdy work shoes, long pants, and snug fitting clothes that won't be caught in moving parts. Also wear hearing protection and safety glasses. Do not wear open-toed shoes when around or operating any piece of equipment. Depending on the job, you may also want to wear a long sleeve shirt, sunscreen, heavy duty gloves, and a hard hat. Always start with a walk around inspection before mowing. Make sure hardware is tight and guards and shields are in place and in good condition. Look under the machine and check for oil, fuel, or coolant leaks. Make sure all warning decals are readable. Notify your supervisor or local dealer if there are any missing or damaged decals. Make sure the rotary blades are in good condition. With gloves on, check the blades. Make sure they are not severely nicked or damaged. Replace any damaged blades before mowing. Check the tire pressure and the condition of the tires. The operator's manual lists the recommended air pressure for the tires. Before starting the engine, check the engine oil level. The level on the dipstick should be between the add and full marks. Lift the foot plate and check the transaxle oil level. The level on the dipstick should be between the hash marks. Also, check the engine coolant level in the overflow container. If the engine is warm, the coolant should be between the full and low lines marked on the container. On units with four-wheel drive, check the rear axle fluid. The dipstick is located on the rear axle housing. If you need to add fluids, fill to the indicated levels. See the operator's manual for more information on checking and refilling engine and transmission fluids. Check the engine drive belts for cracking, fraying, and for tension. Check the fuel system water separator for water or contaminants in the bottom of the bowl. If water is present, loosen the drain at the bottom of the sediment bowl and drain the water. Check the air restriction indicator. If the red indicator is showing, change the primary element, reset the indicator, and throttle up the engine to full speed. If the red indicator still shows, change the secondary element. Check for and remove excess debris or objects from the mower deck, the air intake screen, the engine compartment, the engine cooling fins, transaxle, and exhaust. Always check the height of cut before mowing. There are 11 cutting height settings available within a range of 1 to 6 inches. To adjust the height of cut, raise and lock the service latch on both lift arms. See the decal on the front of the deck or check the operator's manual for the rear hanger pinhole locations that correspond with your required height of cut. Remove the rear hanger pins on the rear hanger plate on both the left and right side of the deck and reinsert them into the proper holes. Okay. To change the front casters, support the caster wheel with one hand and remove the quick lock pin and spacer guard. Move the proper number of spacers either on top or bottom to reach your chosen height of cut. The caster wheel bracket is offset to provide a range of cut. If your normal cutting height is between 1 and 4.5 and inches, the caster wheel bracket should be in the up position. 1500 Terrain Cut Open Station models come with a foldable rollover protection system or ROPS. Always mow with the ROPS in the raised position and always wear your seatbelt when the ROPS is raised. Fold the ROPS for better clearance under low hanging branches and for easier loading into enclosed trailers. Do not wear your seatbelt with the ROPS in the lower position and raise the ROPS as soon as conditions permit. The 1500 Terrain Cut mowers have a safety interlock system installed. To start the engine, you must be sitting in the seat with the park brake engaged and the PTO disengaged. See the operator's manual for information on how to test the operator presence system and test the PTO shutoff switch, park brake switch, neutral start switch, and seat switch before you mow. If you find a problem while testing, notify your supervisor or local dealer. Do not operate the machine. Safe and proper mowing with the 1500 Terrain Cut requires your complete focus and attention. To start the engine, sit in the seat with the ROPS up and your seatbelt fastened. Make sure the park brake is locked or press and hold the brake pedal down with your right foot. Make sure that the PTO is disengaged and the throttle lever is in the slow idle position. Turn the key to the on position. On diesel engine models, wait for the engine preheat light to turn off. 
Turn the key to start the engine and release it to the run position after the engine starts. Let the engine warm up at half throttle for two minutes before operating the machine. To transport, move the throttle to full and slowly push down on the forward pedal or reverse pedal if you are backing up. Always transport at low speeds and do not transport with the PTO engaged. Always transport with the deck in the float position. If you must transport with the deck raised, avoid hard braking and slopes. When crossing roadways, always stop and look both ways before proceeding with caution. When transporting and when mowing, be careful when approaching blind corners with shrubs, fences, or other obstacles that can block your vision. Never carry riders when transporting or mowing. Before mowing, walk the mowing area and remove any debris and or objects that could damage the mower or be picked up and thrown from the discharge chute. Check for any potential hazards. It's a good idea to mark things like potholes, sprinkler heads, or other hidden hazards with flags so you can avoid running them over while mowing. Low-hanging branches are another potential hazard, which you should avoid or remove before mowing. Study the area and plan a mowing pattern that is both safe and efficient. Also, before mowing, clear the mowing area. Never mow while people, especially children or pets, are nearby to keep them safe from injury. When mowing, slow down when trimming close to objects to maintain traction and reduce scuffing of grass. Always keep the discharge chute in place to keep others safe from injury and to protect property from flying debris when mowing. Never remove or prop the chute up. Always mow with the discharge chute facing away from windows, autos, and high traffic areas to avoid causing damage. Stop mowing if someone approaches you. Do not raise the deck when the blades are running and never carry riders. If you strike an object, park safely on level ground. Then turn off the PTO, engage the brake, and remove the key. Get off and inspect the machine for damage. Have any damage repaired before mowing again. Always keep a safe distance from retaining walls, ledges, and drainage ditches where a wheel could accidentally slip off. Use a walk-behind mower or string trimmer to cut grass in these areas. Use caution when mowing around water features where the ground can drop off quickly and be unstable. Make sure the ground is not too wet, soft, slippery, or unstable. Not all slopes can be mowed. Loss of control accidents and rollovers are a major cause of injury. Always survey the mowing site to determine if slopes are safe for mowing. Consider the terrain and turf conditions when deciding what areas are safe to mow. You should establish your own special procedures and rules for mowing slopes. Do not mow or operate the terrain cut series on slope angles greater than 25 degrees. See the operator's manual for more information on mowing slopes safely. To measure slopes for safe mowing, lay a straight piece of sturdy lumber 1.2 meters or 4 feet long on the slope and measure the angle with an angle indicator or protractor level. See the operator's manual for additional methods to measure slopes. As you mow, watch the quality of cut to make sure the mower is cutting correctly. Also, pay attention to the machine and how it operates. Report any problems to your supervisor or local dealer. All front mower models are equipped with a ROPS. Mow with the ROPS fully upright and locked whenever possible. Always wear your seatbelt when the ROPS is upright. Lower the ROPS only when it's required to mow an area with low clearance. Do not wear your seatbelt when mowing with the ROPS lowered. Raise the ROPS as soon as you've mowed the low clearance area and resume wearing your seatbelt. The seatbelt keeps you from being thrown and possibly crushed by the machine should it tip over in an accident. To park the machine, stop on level ground, engage the parking brake, lower the deck to the ground, throttle down the engine, turn the key to off and remove it from the ignition before getting off the mower. To transport the mower on a trailer, carefully drive or back the unit up the ramp and onto the trailer. Lower the deck and engage the parking brake. Turn off the engine, remove the key, and get off the machine. Finish by securing the mower to the trailer. Use tie-downs at the rear of the unit and place straps over the mower push arms at the front. See the operator's manual for more information on operating the 1500 terrain cut mowers. After you finish mowing, there is some maintenance you should do to get the mower ready for the next day. After the engine has cooled, open the hood and use low pressure compressed air to clean the engine compartment, radiator, and oil cooler. Blow parallel to the cooling fins to prevent damage. Damaged fins can reduce cooling efficiency of the radiator. Lift the foot plate and clean debris off the transaxle.
Remove the mower deck belt covers and remove debris. Use low pressure water to wash the cutting units. A high pressure power washer could force grease out of the bearings and actually damage some parts. Do not spray cold water on a hot engine block. After rinsing, lubricate the mowing deck and caster wheels. See the lubrication chart in the operator's manual for the location of grease points and lubrication intervals. Before parking the machine, fill the fuel tank with fresh fuel. Fill to the bottom of the filler neck. Here's some information to help you service the mowing deck. To rotate the deck for easy service, disengage the PTO, stop the engine, remove the ignition key, and wait until the blades have stopped moving. Open the floor plate and disconnect the mower drive shaft. Make sure the drive shaft is laying straight back from the gearbox. Start the engine and pull the lift lower lever back to raise the deck to its highest position. And then stop the engine, remove the ignition key, and engage the service latches on both lift arms. Disengage the rear deck suspension links from the deck. Be sure to note the selected pin position before removing the link pin. Next, remove the pin from the left rear gauge wheel and remove the wheel for additional clearance. With gloves on, grab the front of the deck and lift it up until the service latch pin aligns with the service lock hole. Hold the deck in position and rotate the handle until the pin engages. Always block blades securely to prevent injury when loosening or tightening the mounting hardware. See the operator's manual for more information on removing the blades. When service is complete, pull the service latch pin outward to release the latch and then reconnect the mower drive shaft. Reconnect the rear lift links to the proper holes in the adjustment brackets. Install the retaining rings and return the left rear gauge wheel to its normal operating position. Disengage the service latches and lower the implement. With proper operation and regular maintenance using genuine John Deere parts and lubricants, you'll get years of service from your investment. Remember, the information provided here is only an overview. Be sure to read the operator's manual before operating, servicing, or making any adjustments to the terrain cut mowers. And most important, always think safety when operating or maintaining any machine. If you have any questions or problems, be sure to contact your local John Deere dealer.